friends, it's Kayla. Welcome back to my channel. Here we talk about all things Disney as well as how to plan your Walt Disney World vacation. So if that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. to part four in our budgeting mini series. We are talking all about how to budget for your Walt Disney World vacation and I'm kind of breaking it down by category. And today we are gonna talk th about the big one of food expenses. This one can be a little tough to do, but hopefully I can break it down for you and simplify it in a way that'll make it easy for you and your family. All right, so what do you need to do first? decide where you're gonna eat. <laughs> um, and you don't necessarily have to decide exactly, specifically, 100% everywhere that you are eating, but it is a good idea to go ahead and start getting a good idea of the types of restaurants that you're wanting to eat at. So there are the three different tiers. There's your uh, quick service dining, your table service dining, and then your signature dining, which all have different price points and all have different types of styles of dining. So you need to just kind of go through and get an idea of maybe some of the restaurants that you're planning on eating at and just some idea of what types of restaurants you're wanting. If you're going to be doing a more a cheaper trip, going more quick service, or maybe if you're gonna be going way crazy and doing a bunch of signature dining, it's just a good idea, it's a good starting place. Along with this too, you do also need to be thinking about if you are going to be attending any of the Epcot food festivals. So these happen during the majority of the year and these are priced a little bit differently. It's almost kind of more like snack prices. I would say most of the food items are gonna be between uh, about four and $10 and drinks are gonna be anywhere from probably around five to $15, just depending on what you get. Uh, so these are gonna be, you're gonna have to kind of budget this, not separately, but you are gonna need to take that into consideration when we go into doing the numbers. So now that you've kind of looked at what you are going to be eating, you can go on the Disney website and almost every single eating location has the menu with oftentimes the prices on the Disney website. So what I like to do is actually go through my entire restaurant list and kind of break it down a little bit and see kind of what types of foods I would be eating at each of those places and how much they're gonna cost. Now we'll get into the nitty gritties of like the actual numbers here in a second, um, but first I wanna talk about the dining plan. Are you planning on getting the dining plan? If so, that's where it's really important to know the types of restaurants that you are wanting to eat at. If you don't necessarily have the specific restaurants, you do need to know ex uh, the types of restaurants that you're planning on eating at. That way you know what dining plan to get. I have a whole series on just like the dining plan and everything. I will link that above. Um, but basically you have your quick service dining plan, your normal dining plan, and then your deluxe dining plan. So, and a lot of those are just gonna depend on how much table service, how much quick service, and that sort of thing. Now, if you are doing the dining plan, this is where your budgeting gets super easy. Basically, you just, once you know what dining plan you're doing, you take the price of the dining plan per person per night of your trip and add that all up and then honestly that is pretty much what you need to budget for food now there are some a little bit of extra things that we're going to talk about here in a minute but generally that's your food budget pretty easy now if you're not on the dining plan that's where things get a little trickier but again don't worry we got this if you are on the dining plan the few extra things that you need to budget for and this will kind of go for people who are not on the dining plan as well uh, but you need to make sure that you have enough money allotted for gratuities and tips at table service restaurants and signature dining restaurants you are required to tip you're not required to tip it is highly suggested that you tip. You should tip your, your waiter and waitresses. Um, but you need to make sure that you do have some money for that, as well as have some extra money, almost kind of like 
I like to call it a food emergency fund. This is going to help pay for things that are not included on the dining plan. I know that there will be like some drinks at food and wine festival or those Epcot festivals that you that are not included in the dining plan. A lot of times the alcohol outside of like your meals and then there's just a few other food items randomly that you may want to have that may not be included on the dining plan so you need to make sure you have a good buffer usually we have we say maybe like a couple hundred dollars is what we do if you don't use all that that's okay like I know that sounds like why on earth would I already have this and it's it's just good to have that extra cash just in case and if you don't use it you don't use it and that's awesome because then you get to take that money home so <laughs> Just make sure you do have a little bit of that buffer just for those extra items. So now, for those of you that are not on the dining plan, let's break this down. So what we do, and we try to have a pretty good idea when we sit down to do our budget of where we're going to eat. Um, if we may not have everything 100% nailed down, but we try to have at least the majority of our restaurants picked out. Then what we will do is we will actually go through and on each one of those restaurants and I like to pick out two entrees an appetizer and a dessert and maybe drinks we don't really do a lot of like fun specialty drinks and things like that we are more like water drinkers we might get a glass of wine or something but basically that is what we do so for each one of those meals we do two entrees an appetizer a dessert and possibly drinks depending on where it's at that's a lot of food, okay? Yeah, I know, that's a lot of food. Do we actually eat that much food? No, absolutely not. But we like to have the option that if we decide, hey, maybe we don't wanna share this meal, we wanna each get our own thing, we know that we have plenty of money that we're gonna be totally fine and not have to worry about, oh, do I should I get a less expensive meal because blah 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 and I, it just makes it a lot less stress-free and it kind of almost gives you that same all-inclusive feel that the dining plan does because we've already budgeted basically like the general max amount that we would spend at that restaurant now a lot of this too with numbers i don't get super technical and like write down the exact change and everything i just kind of round and estimate like generally like if i'm looking at a restaurant it looks like most of the meals that i would probably eat are going to be around 20 to 25 dollars then I'll, I'll budget maybe i'll say okay so at this it'll be like 23 dollars I just kind of give a good round amount that way because at some restaurants you are going to use all that money and at others you're not. So it should even out for the most part, but it at least gives you a good buffer. So that's for your meals. Now you need to accommodate for snacks. Typically we will do about $8 per snack that we think we would eat in a day. Now with this, we are a little bit more particular with this because we have like an ongoing list of the snacks that we want to try. <laughs> You do not need to do this. This is just how we have it. Um, and so we'll look and see like what those different, like what we think we might eat at the different parks. And then we'll just kind of multiply that. Usually I would say for us, we usually do maybe about three snacks a day. Um, so that eight times three is usually what we budget per day for snacks. Now for your family, it may be a little bit different if you have more people. For me, it's just Mark Allen and I, so we don't really have to do as much than if we were to have kids and things like that. Now again, we do need to budget for gratuities and tips. Uh, so mainly this is just gonna apply towards your table service restaurants. So those numbers that you've already figured, uh, you can actually look and kind of guesstimate about how much tips are gonna be. Again, I just do nice round numbers I don't do anything like super crazy you can if you want to but we we just like to kind of round everything out to make it easy usually for us for about a five-day trip we budget about mm, 150 dollars or so for tips just depending on where we're eating at um, that's usually for like maybe one table service every day um, for you it might be a little bit higher it may be a little bit less it just really depends but that's kind of an ish amount that we do so now that you have all of those numbers so just to recap you have your meal numbers so about how much you would be eating per meal and then you have your snack numbers 
So about how many snacks you, you would be doing and then your tips and gratuity. So you can lump all that together and then that is what your budget is going to be for your trip. Now, same thing with this. If you wanted to do a little bit of like an emergency fund or just an extra buffer, we honestly, we just tack on an extra hundred dollars just to be safe because if plans change or whatever, or maybe things were a little more expensive or we go a little crazy, it's just nice to know that, oh no, we're not gonna get to like the third day and not have any more money for food. So that's how we do it. And that's uh, kind of our way. It's a little tricky. It does take some planning, but it does help us really know how much money we need going into it because the way that Disney prices their food is so different than everyday life that you do have to kind of plan for it. You can't just like go in expecting to buy a $5 hamburger because that ain't gonna happen. Now with a lot of this, your numbers may look really high for food and that is okay. Do not panic. It does not mean that you are going to spend that much on food, but listen, if you get there and you're enjoying your vacation as you should be and you're going along and you're getting food that you want and you're not stressing about it and then all of a sudden, Oh no, we have a day or two left in our trip and we used all of our money because we weren't being careful or we under budgeted or whatever. You don't want to be in that situation because that is not fun. And then that's how we go into debt for our trip. And our goal is to not do that. So it's good to have that really high number for this because this is going to be kind of almost one of your more variable categories because you're not really going to know how much you're spending until you get done with your trip. Um, so it's good to have that extra money just in case. And if you get to bring a bunch of money home, um, why is that a bad thing? <laughs> I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's great. So don't freak out if your number is high. If that's a good thing, that means you're doing it correctly. <laughs> the same principle applies if you're on the dining plan. On our May trip, we had the quick service dining plan and we ended up actually using all of our snack credits, I think by like maybe the second or halfway through the third day. And that was it, like we had no more snack credits and we were like, oh no, we haven't even like really done flower and garden festival yet. So it was nice to have that cash that we were still able to enjoy the festival and do that um, without worrying about, oh no, we ran out of credits, so now we can't get nothing else. This was also good too, because on the last night or, or the last day of our trip, we just kind of last minute decided that we wanted to eat at Ohana. Well, that's a table service restaurant, so you can't use your quick service credit for that. So we actually had to pay for that out of pocket as well. So it was nice that we were able to have some of that money buffer uh, just to make sure that we could still eat at the places that we wanted to eat. All right, so just a couple more tips just to help you make sure that you are the most prepared that you can be for food because this is honestly the one that can get you in the most trouble if you're not careful. So number one, if you are on the free dining plan, you do still need to budget for food. What? But it's free, Kayla. Yes, I know. However, like we've already mentioned in this video, if you run out of credits, you're gonna need some extra cash. If you are eating at a table service or signature dining restaurant, you're gonna need money for gratuities and things like that. And again, some things are not covered from the dining plan. So even if you have free dining, you do still need to make sure that you got a couple hundred dollars at least for those extra things. And then number two, I talk a lot about sharing meals. Disney does have a lot of very large portions and we personally like have it as a rule that we share everything because we want to try everything. Now, because I say this, that doesn't mean that you should only budget for one meal per place that you eat because what happens if you get there and you decide that you're really hungry and you do want your own meal? Well, you only budgeted for one meal, so you're kind of out of luck. So that's why I recommend budgeting for two meals. That way, if you decide you do want them, you can have them. If you decide you don't, well, cool. Then you got some extra money to spend somewhere else. Um, but definitely, it's kind of that concept of don't under budget. You always want to over budget even if you are planning on only sharing your meals. So that is all of my tips on how to budget for food for your Walt Disney World vacation. What are some tips that you guys have to make food planning a little bit easier? Leave those down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And I've got one more video in this 
series, so make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss it. Um, next time we're gonna talk about basically all of the catch-all things that we haven't talked about already. Uh, so if you enjoyed that and you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And that is it, that's all I got for you guys today. We'll see you next time, bye.